And today we're going to talk about interpolation, uh, which has nothing to do with any of the previous streams, as part of my, uh, I feel, my job to not ever teach you anything or indeed learn anything myself. So today what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about interpolation. We have a very uh, specific, uh, specific plan in mind here. There's a very specific thing I'm going to do with interpolation. Uh, we will be starting a new uh, REPL, if I can figure, rem remember how to do it, and we will not be pulling from anywhere uh, because uh, this REPL is not being pulled from a git. Uh, this is a, so we're going to go ahead and call this a Twitch uh, interpolation. has no description, and we're going to create it. So let's uh, magically watch as things hopefully happen. Okay, now in order to use this, I'm going to need to upload a couple of files, which will take some time. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it uh, now to save some time. And I'm going to go ahead and upload them at the top level, even though I'm going to regret that decision. Because, you know, let's face it, uh, I regret everything I do. I regret nothing! I regret, I regret everything. Some people regret nothing. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and do that. There's four, f uh, actually there's two files we're going to need. And uh, the, they are on the VM, so that I have done a little bit of pre-prep for this. Uh, not for you, but for myself. Um, solar interp and I think lunar interp are the only two we need. There are two others, but those are built from, or actually the files I'm uploading are built from them. And the bigger one is going to be uh, the lunar interp. This one's a little bit bigger. I think we can actually look at solar interp. It's small enough that we might be able to just look at it. Okay. Um, and I guess we could use BC lib and stuff, but it doesn't really matter because we're not going to be um, it's not going to be, we're not going to be at that point right now. Okay, so what is interpolation, why are we using it, and uh, etc. Well, actually, hang on, let me go ahead and script source these, because again, we're, we are on uh, client-side JavaScript, so we, we can do this very nice script sourcing. It's difficult to include Java files into one another on the uh, server side, which is one of the many, many reasons JavaScript is a terrible language, and the people who use it you know, if if they did, if they had a choice, they wouldn't. At least I wouldn't. Okay, but I don't, so we will. Um, and on the on the client side, it's actually not too bad. At the client side, we can we can do what we want by doing script source. Uh, you can't do this on the server side with Node.js, which is a, a major pain in the ass. Okay, so what is interpolation, and why do we need it? Um, well, I'm just going to talk a little bit about it now before we actually write any code. I already know this stuff. Uh, well, I'm actually making it up as I go along, but I kind of know it a little bit. Okay, so uh, in computers uh, programming, we often compute functions, and some of them are pretty easy to compute, some of them are more difficult to compute. Uh, some of them are really, really difficult to compute, and it would be too slow or require external data that we don't have to compute. So in those cases, we might want to just make a lookup table of the function. So if we needed to know what the function was at a given value, we would just have a table that would say, you know, at this value, the function's equal to this, at this other value, the function's equal to that, and so forth, so forth and so on. Now, one piece of data we're going to need um, technically for the map project, but really just in general, is we want to know uh, where the sun is at any time. The sun not being uh, Jesus Christ, S-O-N, but rather uh, the uh, Apollo or the soul, which is uh, S. UN in our sky. So you might say, well, I know where the sun is, you know, if you're just go out and look at it, point at it, that's great. But we want to know uh, astronomically where the sun is located. And uh, that is uh, known as the uh, right ascension and declination of the sun. Uh, and those are big fancy words. I don't know what they mean. Uh, astronomers do. But, but using the, if we know those two numbers, the right ascension and the declination, we can get a lot of more information about the sun, the moon, or anything we know the uh, declination and right ascension of. So how do we compute the, how do we figure out what the declination and the right ascension of the sun are? Well, the right ascension is sort of like longitude. And it, um, except it doesn't, unlike the Earth, it doesn't rotate. So basically the sun starts off in the, um, in the constellation that is called, you know, by astrologers is called Aries, but which is actually Gemini, uh, might be Cancer by now, I'm not sure. Oh, it's between Taurus and Gemini, maybe, but it's not in Aries anymore. Um, that's the f called the first point of Aries. It's still called that even though it's not in Aries anymore. And that's the called the spring equinox. And then, uh, you know, it moves all the way in a circle for one year until it gets back to the same point, approximately, called the spring equinox. Now, the Earth itself is tilting and 
precessing and mutating and doing all this crazy stuff. So it turns out that uh, the spring equinox today, this year, and the spring equinox next year don't actually occur in exactly the same spot, but it's pretty close. Um, and then throughout the year, the sun goes into, th you know, and that's called the zero hour. The, where the spring equinox occurs is the zero hour, and that, that's defined to be the point where the, uh, the sun hits the celestial equator. Um, okay, and then, you know, the, we have the summer solstice, where, which is when the sun is at six hours of right ascension. Uh, the uh, autumn equinox, 12 hours. Winter solstice, 18 hours, and then back to the spring equinox at zero hours. The... Uh, a right ascension scale goes from 0 to 24 hours, although we're going to look at it in radians, because uh, which goes from 0 to 2 pi, because that actually makes more sense. It's for some reason 24 hours, because there's 24 hours in the day and all that stuff. But 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 we c you can use it in any units you want, and we're going to look at it in radians, because that is what we need. Uh, the declination of the sun uh, basically says, the declination of the sun is 0 degrees at the spring and autumnal equinoxes. And uh, at the f when, when we say it's the first day of summer, we're saying that the sun has its highest declination, which is about 23.5 degrees. Uh, and um, that's, it's roughly over what's called the Tropic of Cancer. Uh, again, the sun is no longer in Cancer when that happens, but it used to be at one point, so we still call it the Tropic of Cancer. The winter solstice, the sun is at negative 23.5 degrees, meaning it's overhead for the people who live near the Tropic of Capricorn, although once again the sun is not actually in Capricorn at the time. I think it's in Scorpius now, but that, but it's definitely not in Capricorn anymore. All of the constellations have moved over. So what does all this have to do with interpolation? Oh, and, and just to do real quickly for the moon, the moon does something similar except it moves around uh, the entire ecliptic, the entire, you know, right ascension goes from zero back to zero once every 29.5 days. That's the moon's Sedonic period. Um, now you might say, hey, the moon goes through its phases in 28 days, not 29 and a half days. But that's actually a little bit different because uh, if, the, if, the, if the sun were to stand still, the moon's Sidonic and sidereal periods would be the same, but the sun moves, so it turns out the uh, lunar phases go through a cycle of 28 days, but the moon repeats on the ecliptic, its right ascension and declination, roughly speaking, and its right ascension returns to zero hours, roughly speaking, every 29.5 days. Now, the problem with both of the things I've just said is these are approximations. The sun's speed through the uh, sky in terms of, you know, right ascension is like longitude, declination is like latitude. Um, and in fact, very roughly speaking, you can imagine that the right ascension and declination tell you where the, uh, there would, you know, where the, uh, wow, I got confused by a text message I don't need. Um, R very roughly, where the sun would be overhead at a given time, known as zero hour Greenwich time. Um, uh, zero hour sidereal, zero hour Greenwich time. Um, and the declination would tell you uh, what latitude something is over, and that would be actually true all of the time. But the right ascension, it, because the Earth rotates, changes. So, so what's the problem with all this? Why, you know, so we, we, we sort of understand now why, why we need this, this, this data, so why can't we just compute it? It turns out it's really difficult to compute it accurately for the moon. I mean, it's pretty much impossible. And it's easier for the sun, but it's still pretty difficult if you want a lot of accuracy. Um, so, now getting to what interpolation means, what I did is I wrote a program, and it's, it's, in, my, it's in my GitHub, you should be able to see it if you want, um, that computed the position of the sun every minute between the years 2015 through 2024. So beginning of 2015 to the almost the beginning of 2025. It's a 10-year period. Lots of minutes. Um, in theory, I could try to store all that data in JavaScript, but that's really messy uh, because there are 365 days in a year. Let's actually go ahead and do the math here. I love doing the math. Uh, let's go, go back to our shell here. Um, do I have the calc? Wow. Did that work? Oh, cool. Okay, calc. I just uh, we just need to do this real quick. So there's 365.2425 days in the Gregorian calendar, times 60 minute, 24 hours times 60 minutes, and we're doing it for 10 years. So as you can see, that doesn't work. Um, I have an alias called calc also, but there it is. So we have approximately um, you know 5.2 million uh, different positions for the sun and for the moon also. And that's just one of the parameters. That's just either the right ascension or the declination 
we need another 5.2 million for the other one. So do we need to store all these values? Well, it turns out we do not because even though the values aren't easy to calculate, they form kind of a pattern. In other words, for the sun, if you just pick out every, um, every value every, forgot what it was actually, seven days, which is seven times 24 times 60 because, so every 10,080 uh, minutes, and then you uh, use, uh, use um, approximate between those two times, between now and, you know, between a given time and 10,080 minutes from that given time, uh, using something known as a uh, quartic spline. A spline is an approximate function. Quartic here means that it's going to be a fourth degree approximation. We're going to use a polynomial that has four degrees. So uh, very nicely, we, we sort of reduce the problem of sort of having to store, um, you know, five point, uh, you know, what was it? So yeah, 5.2 and a half million, 5.2 million entries, we only have to uh, store 10,088, or 10,080, I think that is, actually. Um, but, th but of course, now we need to store, because we're storing polynomials, we need to store more than one variable. Uh, to store a fourth degree polynomial, you need five variables. And it turns out that's uh, just because, um, because you have a zero term, which is the constant term, x to the first, x to the second, x to the third, and x to the fourth. Okay, um, so this is actually, so what are those polynomials uh, that, that give you this approximation? Well, Mathematica, I use Mathematica to figure them out. Um, my work is on my GitHub, but it is quite a bit more difficult than using them. And c computing them was harder than, is going to be harder, was harder hopefully than using them. Uh, and what this thing tells us is actually uh, what polynomials we can use to approximate the suns in this case, declination, and lower down its right ascension um, by using these interpolations. And I've converted them to, to JavaScript a little bit. So what this says here is the interpolation goes from Unix time 14200 blah, 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 to Unix time 17 blah, 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 blah. And the interval length, that's uh, actually, uh, all right, 604,800 seconds, which is a week. Um, and that means each of these sets of coefficients like this one right here represents a week's worth of data. In other words, we can we can get the, the declination for a week uh, by using the first element. The next week we need to go to the next element, so on and so forth. Um, the number of points is actually redundant. I mean, you could get it by subtracting the max x and min x and dividing by int length. There's 523 points where we actually uh, where we actually look at the data. And again, keep in mind that we started off with um, 5.2 million points at which we look at the data. So we've done a pretty good job of compressing the amount of data that we're looking at uh, down to just a, just, just a few uh, uh, 523 points, in fact. That's actually pretty damn good, um, which is actually not unexpected. And the interpolation order here, again, it, we don't really need this, but it means we're using the fourth degree polynomials to estimate. Now, uh, a lot of people like cubic splines where the interpolation order would be three. In fact, Mathematica defaults to that. Um, but it turns out for, I actually looked into it and did a whole bunch of, well, time-wasting crap, basically. Uh, interpolation order for quartic splines work better for us in this case. Uh, if you go further, though, like to into fifth-degree polynomials, it doesn't really get any better. And, of course, every time you increase the degree of the polynomial, you make it harder to compute. So it turns out four is sort of the magic number, at least for the data we're looking at. Um, so now, of course, the question is, how do we actually use this data? Um, this, all this data, because I wanted to get it nice and rounded and didn't want to use up too much uh, space, uh, is in micro radians, a very exciting unit, which, of course, uh, nobody gives a rat's ass about, but it is actually fairly useful. So, um, so that's what this is for the solar declination. And then down here below this, we should have the solar right ascension. And this is just a hideous polynomial. There's really nothing interesting about it. Um, and again, for the solar RA interpretation, pretty much the same stuff, different data, obviously, but the same general idea of using this polynomial. So having said all that, and lunar interp is for the moon. Now it turns out, of course, for the moon, oh, I'm going to regret doing this. I already regret doing this. For the moon, it turns out you can't quite uh, you know, approximate by using uh, data that's a week apart. For the moon, you have to go to like 54,000 seconds, which I'm pretty sure is 18 hour. Um, am I? Let's see. What is it? Um, 
Did I say that was? Uh, again, this is not really necessary, but neither is life. So let's see what this is. This is uh, 15 hours, sorry. So for the moon, you actually have to look at the data every 15 hours for the approximation to be accurate enough to be used. And in my case, uh, we are using an accuracy, I don't think it says anywhere actually, they probably should. Uh, we're using an accuracy of two arc seconds, uh, which is about nine micro radians. Two arc seconds, uh, to give you some idea, on the surface of the Earth, that would be about 100 feet. One arc second is about 50 feet. Um, or do I mean meters? No, I think I do mean, I mean feet. Um, so, so the and and the and you know you could get it more accurate. I could have done, I could have used more points to get more accuracy. But you run into other problems. The Earth is not really a sphere. It's not round. The flat Earthers were correct in saying that, but it is in fact an ellipsoid, and it is uh, it is not shaped like a sphere. And it turns out that's a big enough problem that the two seconds of arc accuracy that we're using is not going to be is going to be more than enough because the, the, the accuracy we lose uh, from pretending the Earth is a sphere instead of an ellipsoid it, it vastly exceeds that. Plus there's all sorts of other issues we're going to run into um, that says two seconds is more than enough accuracy for the actual data that we need and, um, and we're going to run into much bigger problems in terms of accuracy. There's also something called the um, uh, the uh, the Earth the ground normal or something. It turns out that um, you might think that the direction of, uh, you know, if you looked, if you were to point to the center of the Earth from where you are, you might think that's down and the opposite direction is up. But it turns out that's not actually true because um, because the Earth is not a sphere, your up is actually a little bit different from that. So there's, uh, there's down in terms of the direction of gravity, you know, the gravity is pulling you. Then there's down in the terms of the center of the Earth which is the center of the ellipsoid that makes up the Earth. And then there's down in terms of something that's perpendicular to your horizon. And those are three diff different definitions of down. In, uh, in astronomy, we want to use the, uh, the her you know, perpendicular to your horizon up and down. And that's called the, sur sorry, surface normal is the correct word for that, the surface normal. And there is a routine to compute it in C-SPICE if you need it accurately. But that routine will show you that um, you really, it's really quite different from assuming that uh, your, your uh, uh, up direction is directly away from the center of the Earth. So and again, again, this is all to justify the fact that we're only going to get, quote unquote, only going to get uh, two uh, arc seconds worth of resolution um, of accuracy, and it's really not going to matter. Okay, I think I've beaten that to death now. Um, so let's go ahead and see how we will use this. So let's, uh, and again, I have not done this before, so it's quite possible I will mess this up horribly. In fact, I would say it's a guarantee that I'm going to mess this up horribly. Uh, but let's go ahead and try it. So first of all, let's just try an example. Let's, let's pick a date. Um, and you know, I'm feeling, let's just pick right now. I mean, you missed it, but let's pick this number here. This is the current time as we do this. It's about 6.40 p.m. here. It's different times in different places because you know time zones but this is actually the unix time so the unix time is actually going to be stable pretty much around the world uh this is the number this is the unix time and uh the, you know it, in unix time it is i think uh oh it's tuesday the third um <laughs> boy i wish i hadn't said that tuesday the third at like 1 41 a.m no no yeah 1 41 a.m but again the this is a time this is the time that could be used by anybody um so now you might wonder um is the right ascension and declination of the sun the same everywhere on the earth the answer to that is pretty much yes uh is it the same for the moon the answer to that is pretty much no because the moon is really close to us we have a parallax effect that messes that up for us however uh the the right ascension and declination we compute are called geocentric for a fictional observer at the center of the earth and it turns out from that, we can still u get the data we need for things like moonrise, moonset. We can compute parallax if we need to. Uh, so yeah, so this is a, the you know even having that right ascension and declination isn't super great, but uh, it, it we can again once again use it. And again, the two seconds of arc is going to mean nothing, nothing at that point. So let's see if I can do a control V here. No, I cannot. That was some of yesterday's code, uh, and I think it's because. I have to do edit copy. One of the few things that uh, 
Emacs doesn't do well is it doesn't uh, obey that standard. Okay, so now, and I'm, this is just going to be sort of me being lazy. Um, so I don't want to refer to it by its big name here, which I, which I gave it, which is um, Solar Deck Interp. And I would like to emphasize once again, I have not done this before, so um, I could be very wrong here. So now the first thing we need to do is compute to see where the time ex you know, where in that interpolation array uh, the, uh, the time actually exists. And because we're sort of close to January 1st, 2020, we're going to expect it to be sort of right in the middle of that array. But let's find out what it actually is. So the first thing we do is we have to say time minus deck dot. Now, come on. Yes. Min x. And then we're going to divide by deck dot. This is actually working now. I like this. Uh, it length. So this basically says we're going to see how many jumps we are, how many intervals we are from the beginning of the of the coefficient array. And we do need to add one here because Mathematica uses a one indexed list, uh, uh, one indexed array. So to Mathematica, one is the first element of the array. To JavaScript, it's zero, and this plus one uh, sort of compensates for that, I think. Unless I mean minus one. Do I mean minus one? Crap. Um, or maybe I don't mean either of those. Woohoo! All right, hang on. Okay, so when we are at the at the min, this will be zero, and we'll be at. Uh, uh, oh, actually, yeah, we we don't need to we don't need to correct. I'm sorry. Uh, we don't need to correct because even though Mathematica uses uh, one indexed arrays, uh, I've converted that to JavaScript, so we're now at zero indexed arrays. So this is going to tell us where we are, and let's go ahead and actually compute this out. Uh, let's, be, let's be brave here. Um, uh, let's we'll call it position. And now, this is not going to work. I mean, I, I would be willing to guarantee you this is going to fail at some hideous level. But let's run it anyway. Well, it hates me because it worked. So we're at the 256th interval, and we're 0.724 into that interval. And we're going to see why that's important in just a second. So first thing we're going to do, and again, we're doing this manually now. We're going to, of course, have to just really ramp it up into a function really quickly. But for right now, we're just going to do it manually. Uh, so what we're going to do here is we're going to get the, the coefficient array that we need. That's going to be deck coefs. Um, I'm, I'm going to just hard code it for right now. 256. So now let's see what that array looks like. Um, and hopefully it's an array of five integers or fewer, it turns out. Okay, it is. Okay. So what, is, what, is the, what does all this mean? We're in microradians here. Uh, so this means we take this number, and, you know, um, that's our constant number. In fact, let's just write this down. Um, uh, okay, I'm going to call this thing here delta. How far we are into the interval, it's between 0 and 1. And we're going to just say it's going to be, this is going to go so horribly wrong, I just know it. Okay. So now, well actually, uh, do I want to call I can't call it deck, because I'm calling something else deck. Okay. So now, what we're really going to do here is, uh, we're going to take the zeroth element of the array, and we're, there's, a, there's a problem with what we're doing. Oh! Failed to connect. Okay. Okay. Then array one times delta plus array two times delta squared. Is that? Oh God damn it! Well, if that doesn't work, we we know it's the other, it's the tick mark instead. Times delta cubed. Not done yet. Uh, zero one two three. Let's see. Hang on. So zero, sorry, zero, one, two, three, four. And it turns out this is actually a really uh, inefficient way of doing things. Uh, and we will fix it. We're going to use something known as Horner's method, which is not as dirty as it sounds, um, to compute polynomials. And that's a, lot fa that's a lot faster and it's more efficient, which I think is the same thing, so I probably shouldn't have said it twice. Okay. So, what is the declination of the sun right now, as we speak, or we don't speak, because I'm speaking? It is that, which does not look good, because, oh, actually it might. 
because that's in micro radians. So we're going to go ahead and divide it by 10 to the 6th to get it in actual radians. Um, or we're going to just delete everything because that, that's another way of doing it. Um, and in this case, I'm pretty sure I do mean 10 to the up. Okay, run this. Beautiful. I mean, it's still not really, though. I mean, that's, that's in radians. Uh, that looks wonderful. I have no idea what the hell it means. The minus sign is a good sign because we are in northern hemisphere winter. The declination is negative. And you're probably wondering, um, how am I going to check all this stuff? And, and we do have an answer for that. Okay, so now this is in radians. So if I take radians and divide by, is it math degree? No, it is probably BC lib degree that I decided to call it. God, I hope that's right. Yep, BC lib is not defined, and you know why it's not defined? Because it's not here. So let's go ahead and upload that as well. And am I going to make my life easier for myself? No, I will not. Um, so let's go ahead and I'm going to be a little bit crazy and just upload it to the main space because we're not really being going anything, doing anything too deep. So we're going to upload file, and this is going to be in home user bc git bc, oh, your mama, bclib.js. That should be fine. And since half of my crap is in my staging library, even though it should not be, uh, we will have to upload bc staging as well. Okay, fantastic. And then, of course, if we're going to actually use them, we have to include them. Um... I think I'm going to include staging first because um, I don't know. Actually, I don't think it matters. I don't think that they're dependent on each other in any way. Okay, so now, see what this does. Not a number, so that is just beautiful there. Um, I'm almost. Yeah, I, I really wish I knew what the hell I was doing. I mean, that would be just so wonderful. BC lib math is un of course BC lib math is undefined. Why would I think it wasn't? All right, let me see what I did over here. I I, I know I did something. BC lib. Uh, I kind of sworn it was degree. Or did I decide to make things even worse than that? And did I do it in BC lib staging just to mess myself up? Okay, here we are. Oh. Uh, you know, I think I fixed this in one of the other gets. But because I didn't never fixed it back in my you know in one of the REPLs, but I never actually fixed it back in the um, uh, back in the library itself. So it is still actually just degree. It doesn't it's not inside of anything, uh, which is fine. I mean that's not going to kill us for right now. But I do need that is a sort of a reminder to myself that I need to um, uh, get the stuff cleaned up a little bit. Okay, so. Minus 22.0, that, you know, that looks really accurate. So let's go on and, no, I'm just kidding. Um, so now the question is, how are we going to find the, the actual uh, declination of the sun at that point in time? Uh, which I probably should have um, sort of noted down. We can get it, we can get back to it real quickly. But, um, but if we're going to do this wrong, we might as well do it wrong all the way. So why don't we go ahead and also get the right ascension. And there's a little slight trick here. That's not a big deal, but it is gonna it is gonna show up here. Uh, wow! Come on! It was so close. I thought it was gonna actually do that continuation. Okay. Now, what's interesting here is because the um, the RA, the right ascension arrays are exactly like the declination arrays. We don't need to recompute position. It's gonna be the same thing. Uh, the array is gonna be different, but the position in terms of the uh, the you know the uh, which array it's going to be in and what number we need to evaluate at is going to be the same. So here we now need to do, um, uh, let's call it, let's be called array or array. So it's in like array, array. If you're, if you're uh, Spanish or Castilian, you must roll your R's at this point. And of course, here we're going to be looking at the RA coefficients. Still 256. Um, I'm going to go ahead and log that, that array as well that array as well. And then um, delta is going to be the same. And here, it's just going to be this, except we're going to be using, of course, the, I think I've done the array joke enough. We're going to use the RAs, the right ascensions array, not the declination array. And I probably should have called the other one R deck or something to be clearer. 
but I didn't. Okay, and did I say let Val? That's probably not, I should call it Val RA, uh, because I want to... And then we're just going to log that too. There's going to be several issues here. Um, one of which is we don't actually measure RA in, in degrees usually. But that's not going to be the main one. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Okay, 2048 degrees. Now you might, you might remember from basic geometry that for 2048 degrees is really not a proper degree um, because degrees are supposed to be between 0 and 360. And that's because of a hack. Uh, the right ascension, when it goes from like 2 pi to 0, that's a major drop and it's very hard to interpolate discontinuous functions. So I made it continuous by sort of increasing the, uh, the value of the, you know, instead of saying 2 pi to 0, it goes from 2 pi to 2 pi plus a small number. So basically, I've made the uh, right ascension a continuous, nearly linear function, uh, which means we're going to get numbers like this, which are perfectly fine, but we just, we're going to fix them by, um, by just modding out 2 pi, assuming that uh, th it'll let me do that. Math mod, come on. And I'm pretty sure math pi is, uh, math pi is constant. Now, let's see if that gives us a little bit of a better of a result. It probably won't. Math mod is not, of course math mod is not a function. Why would it be? Is it math f mod? No, because that's even worse, isn't it? Okay. Now I'm a little bit hesitant to do this because I think percent is actually, is mod in, in JavaScript, but I don't, I think it's integer mod. I don't think it's going to be nice to me. And Well, that, that's just fascinating. Okay. This number seems wrong. So let me just do this real quick. And I'm going to be really stupid and do this sort of alpha beta thing, which is not the same thing as alpha beta testing. It has nothing to do with it. I'm going to print the value of Valerie before and after I make this tweak, and I don't think it's going to be, I don't think it's going to do what I want. Um, okay, so apparently that's a freaking huge number there, um, and did I forget to, I did, um, if I'm going to do stuff like this, I actually do need to divide uh, vol RA by, uh, th this is microradian, so I need to do Otherwise, I could, in theory, uh, mod by 2 math pi times 1 million, but that's stupid, so I won't do that. Okay, alpha is 35, and now, of course, we can just use, we can't divide it because <laughs> by 10 to the 6, we've already done that. So this is nice and nice and fun. We're getting into some issues here. Okay, and that 248 actually looks pretty good. Uh, the problem, of course, is going to be we don't actually measure um, right ascension in degrees, we measure it in hours, and uh, th we can convert from hours, uh, we can convert from degrees to hours by dividing by 15. So my claim is that the uh, sun's right ascension right now is 16.5988, blah, 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 or not right now, but at the time I did this, um, while its declination is minus 220308, blah, 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 blah. So, well, you can just trust me on that, or we can actually go to a site that knows how to do it, and I'm going to hopefully be able to um, uh, horizons... Uh, NASA. And th this is the, uh, no, not New Horizon, here we are. This is something important enough I'm going to necessarily gonna have to bookmark it. And despite what this says here, it's going to work for right now. This is, um, this is a program that NASA has that lets you compute right ascension, declination, and in, in theory I could have gotten my data t for interpolation from NASA directly. It, it turns out that I use C-SPICE, which is a little bit more efficient for me. So we're going to be looking at the sun. Let's go ahead and type that in here. Um, and it's pretty, just comes up pretty quickly. Uh, right, and it actually knows the sun. Uh, we're going to be pretending we're looking from the center of the earth. Uh, we're going to be looking um, 
from the beginning of today, of yesterday rather, to no, 2019, the beginning of tomorrow. So we're going to cover all of the second and the third. And the interval we're going to do is one minute. Um, it, this is still not going to work quite right, but we're going to look to see why. The problem now we're going to go ahead and do this generate ephemeris and see all this wonderful data come out. Um, and here it is; it's beautiful. Uh, now you'll notice the problem here is um, because they would like to give a right ascension and declination in in non-decimal terms. They prefer to give it as uh, hours, minutes, seconds, degrees, minutes, seconds. By the way. Just to annoy people, I should point out that the minutes in the right ascension are not the same as the minutes in the declination. This is a minute that pretends that an hour, you know, like 60 minutes in an hour, 24 hours in, in the celestial sphere. And this minute, 60 minutes in a degree, 360 degrees in the sphere. So different minutes. Can we fix that? Yes. I should have said I don't know. But the way we fix that is to go over here to the table settings. The default is to use all this good stuff. So astrometric, blah, 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 um, daytime format, angle format. We can just go from here to decimal degrees. Ooh, did I mess that up? And right now we're using what's called an airless model. We're pretending there's no refraction, but we will deal with that actually, because that does change the time of sunset. Um, okay. So now, moment of truth. Um, so I'm going to sort of cheat here and see what I actually got as my results. Oh, actually, <laughs> um, so I said it's. Uh, I said the uh, declination is 22.0308. Let's see when that is, and then let's see if that's correct. By the way, it could be very wrong. Um, and actually, it's beginning to look like I'm going to be way off. Uh, no, maybe not. Okay, so it looks like that is going to be tomorrow at 8.04 uh, a.m. Uh, Greenwich time, which is 1.04 in the morning our time. So I am way off for some reason. Not happy about that. Um, so let me double check to see what the time actually is. Um, So that time was 1.40 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, uh, and 30 seconds uh, Greenwich Mean Time. So let's see what went wrong. And I'm hoping it's just a minor error, but I could be very wrong about that. Oh, there's actually one other thing we might need to do. Let's see. Um, yeah. Display output. It turns out what we're using, that's not going to help. Because we're looking to see where the sun and moon are overhead, we're using um, uh, the reference frame known as the ecliptic and equator of the day, which is different from the J2000 reference frame, which they use by default. I think there is a way to change this, though. Uh, here it is. Reference system. Whoa. That's not cool. Um... That's very not cool. I thought there was a way to change this to, to ecliptic and equator of date, which means it's accurate for the fact that the North Pole no longer points in the same direction it pointed to uh, on, you know, on you know, the beginning of the year 2000. It's a very small difference, but it is enough to make a difference in the, in the numbers. So this is kind of sucky because I can't verify what I have here. Um, but... Okay, I'm going to see how accurate I was now, just looking at the date that I had it on, and see, this is depressing though. Alright, so the date we had was, I think in Emacs, it was 014030, so we're just going to look at um, December 3rd, so that's a bit further down here. So it's right here, 21.99200, and we had... Um, 22.03. Um, so that's a difference of 0 0.04 degrees, which is really not great. It's 
it's about two or three minutes of arc. Um, but anyway, so now let's go ahead and print out the, apparently they're going to use degrees for this, so I'm going to go ahead and just make it in degrees. The right ascension, I claim, is dun, 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 248.98. They say it is uh, 248.69. So it is a little bit different there. I'm off by like point three. Oh, that's actually not nice. I'm off by like point three of a degree there. That's 248.98. Yeah, I'm all off by almost uh, three tenths of a degree. Not nice. Not good. That's 18 minutes of arc. Okay, so how are we going to... Uh, now, I'm going to actually do something here. I'm going to go to Stellarium, which actually will show me both the J2000 and the um, the actual, the, the corrected for uh, precession. Uh, you know, and this, this I could still get this wrong, but this will be wrong in a writer way. Just pretend that made sense. Okay, we're going to find the sun. And this is... I don't know if you can see my mouse here, but if you look at the top left corner... Uh, you'll notice that the RA declination uh, is a little bit different uh, for of date than it is for J2000. And of course this is actually, uh, let's stop the freaking clock because it bugs the crap out of me. Oh, and I need to make this a little bit smaller because Stellarium, I do want it running in a window, but the window is bigger than the screen frame. Okay, so let's go ahead and stop this now. And of course this was actually a few minutes ago, so... Now you'll notice, unfortunately, I don't think we can get them to give this in decimal. Whoa, shiny. Um, there's probably a way to get them to give this in decimal, but I think we might just have to live with this. So let's go ahead and find the time again, which was 014030. And we're now at a little bit further than that. Let's da 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 da. Oh, that was going too fast. I'm going to try to actually stop it in the middle. Of oh, shit. And not because there's anything really clever about this, but just because I'm being a moron. Okay, you know what? I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do F5. I think this was oh, oh, 4030. And we are at pause time, so if that is correct, oh, no, oh, 14030, sorry. So that's not a hard thing to fix. Okay. All right. So now, um,. The declination here is 1232. Would I say mine was lower or was mine higher? Or you know what? We're going to actually just compute this. Sorry, we're just going to do this. Um, the declination here is... And you will notice, by the way, the sun is not Russell Hogg. It's not the name of our sun. So I noticed this was wrong because, of course, the sun would have a negative declination at this time. So let's go ahead and find the, the actual sun. Okay. And so this is minus, now let me see if the, the, the really critical thing here is, um, yeah, my number was minus 22 something, and I think that's actually going to get end up being closer. So let's compute what this these numbers are. So of date, 220160, which is actually 2202. Oh, right, because <laughs> that's one of the problems with Unix programs to think of 2203333, that's what Stellarium says, and I say very, very close. So it's much, much closer when we adjust for the, the date. Let's go ahead and do the hours as well, just to prove that I'm right, because I'm always right. Um, and the right ascension of the date here is 1635.57, which is this, but we need to still convert that. That's an, that's an hours, minutes, and seconds. We need to convert that to degrees by dividing by 15, and that gives us badly placed parentheses. So that's uh, it's always good to know. I think we need to quotate from this. Um, I probably meant to say pl m uh, times 15, didn't I? Yep because there's 24 hours and 360 degrees, so we need to go this direction with it. 248.9875, and my number was 
three one. So this this actually I'm now more confident that we are getting the right answer here. Okay, so now the question of course is um, shall we create a function to do all of this nice stuff? And the, the other question is how does this tell us where the sun is overhead? And it turns out there's a little bit more of a work required to do that. Uh, but let's go ahead and write our function here. And we'll go ahead and write it in... I was just going to write it in the middle of no freaking where. Um, but let's be nice and write it over here. Uh, and let's go ahead and actually um, download a zip because it is sort of a nice stopping point here. Not a stopping point, a nice point to continue on from. Okay, um... I'm going to just make the function in script.js. I'm going to move it over. Okay. So the function is going to be, and we're going to make it general. Um, so solar deck interp, and um, and by the way, we're going to check the moon values after we've made this a function to make life a little bit easier. And solar ra interp are both what are known, I, what I've created as interpolation objects. So we're going to have a function. Um, that takes an interpolation, an interp, and an x, and res dance, um, and returns a y value. Um, and again, we're interpreting a function. I mean, actually, uh, the function we're interpreting, you know, it, the, the interpolation is actually a function uh, that, I that approximates another function. So let's go ahead and do our lovely Java doc stuff here. Um, given an interpolation object, which is what I'm going to call these things, and the value of x, return the corresponding value of y. Okay. Input object. So we'll need uh, interp, the interpolation object. We're going to need x the value at which and okay there's an issue here that we're going to deal with later the value at which to evaluate oh that sounds horrible um, and the output object will just be I think y the value of the interpolation at x very nice now the one thing I sort of probably should have done, and I'm going to go ahead and do it, oh, oh, I'm not going to do this now, but I'm going to make a to-do note to do this. Uh, right now, I said we're giving our answers in microradians. That's fine, but um, we probably should mention somewhere in the interpolation object that we're using microradians. Either we could say unit microradians, or more likely we could say uh, multiplier one over one million, meaning that once you get the result, you should divide it by a million and multiply it by one over one million before sending it back to the user because we have not really sort of told the user what the units are and by default when you're measuring angles the units should be radians not micro radians so um, add multiply by or something we need just, just be consistent about it uh, I'm going to be lazy or something to interpolation objects since they return data in micro radians, not radians. Now, of course, for right now, we're just going to kind of deal with that our, on our own. It's not going to be a huge deal. Okay. So we're going to basically follow the same pr process we followed before to the point that I think I want to cut and paste this stuff here. Um, yeah. And we're going to obviously change it because it's not going to be the same. But Okay. So the, um, the time here, that's just going to be object x. Uh, and we already have this. So, okay. So the time, we already know what that's going to be. We, the, this is also given to us. So the position we will still need to get is going to be the x value, object x, minus the... Um, minimum x value of the interpretation. Now there is a, um, let me go ahead and add this in, we're not going to do it, but um, it's possible that they're going to request an x value that's actually outside of uh, what this interpolation can handle. Um, and if that happens, we, we need to return an error. 
So we're going to say object x minus the interpretation, the interpolation. I need to stop doing that. Min x over the interpolations uh, uh, length uh, for each um, for each interval. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and keep it logged for right now. Although obviously we can't do that. Um, and let's see. We now need. So the position is going to be actually a, uh, a mixed number. It's going to be an integer and a fraction. And so we need to say, of course, uh, pause. Let's call it i for integer, and that is going to be math floor of pause. And let pause fraction equals pause minus pause i. So that should, that should do it. Um, and again, we probably, again, these numbers are going to be positive and all this good stuff. Uh, and then let's see, do we need this? We do need this. Um, the array we're going to be evaluating is the array at pause i, that's the integer position. Uh, let's go ahead and console log that for right now. Delta, how far in we are, is going to be pause f. Um, so we really don't even need this variable, we should just use pause f. Okay. Now there's sort of a problem with this, which I haven't mentioned which is this only works if your polynomial is known to be of exactly degree um, so in fact let's not even do that it's known to be of exactly degree uh, 4 if it's not this 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 line 77 to 79 won't work um, so let's instead of, of trying to do that let's sit and look at the array um, and I'm going to be clever no I'm not because I'm going to do a separate function of that okay so i equals 0 i uh, is less than array length because again we have um, zero indexed arrays um, and we're going to start with sum is going to be of course the result we want so each time we're going to say now sum you know we're going to add to it uh, the value of array mm, i times What's our x value? Pause f um, to the power of i. Boy, that looks ugly. I think that's correct, though, actually. <laughs> um, okay. So basically, we add the zeroth power to the first power to the second, all the way up to however big the array is. Uh, this is inefficient. We will fix it later. Maybe. And then I think we're going to go ahead and log it just for our own benefit here. And then we're just going to return it. No, we can't do that. Sorry. We're going to return an object whose y value is sum. I think we can get away with that, actually. Um, because we're not going to return anything else. I mean, right now we've decided we're just going to return a y value, so yeah, this this will almost definitely not even compile, but let's see what happens. Okay, well, that compiled. It's pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and comment all this out for right now okay and let's let's be because of function hoisting I think we can just put our tests up here uh, and also I'm pretty sure that's I'm, I just lied about that interp nice it's finally doing what I want it's finally giving me completion okay so here we're gonna say that um, the interp we're going to try to get the same results we had here, but this time using the function. So that's kind of so the interpret the interpolation. By the way, if I keep saying uh, interpretation, just assume I mean interpolation. Um, by the way, he hello to the person in chat. I will not say your name unless you wish to be mentioned. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, hope you're not bored to death. So the interpolation we're using is that one. Uh, the um, the x value we we want the the uh, calculation for is this and is there anything else we need to give it I don't think so I think this is a pretty simple function it just takes uh, yeah the interpolation in X um, and we should just be able to console log this and then w the same thing for the uh, right ascension and so we'll just say solar RA interp and again if this works I will be let's look that. If this works again I will be very impressed Interp is not defined. Okay. 
Good deal. Oh, and I actually probably going to say object interp over here somewhere. Yep. So, good that we had an error because I was getting cocky there. And now, deck is not defined. Well, that that's true. What am I using it, though? Yeah. Um, of course, this would be the object interp. And then I could if I wanted to give it a temporary variable, but I'm not going to. Okay, and now we're getting values that are... I know, I know these are multiplied by millions. That that's not the problem I'm having with these. Um, oh, you know what we also might need to do, and maybe mod out because we do not necessarily want the results to be in in. Uh, you know, in we want them to be between zero and two pi. So the question is, is this the correct value for uh, declination? I have no idea because I think we're going to have to actually assign these to variables. Uh, let, and I should be able to say DEC here because I'm not use I'm not really using it. Uh, I'm using it as a uh, as a local variable in the function. Um, so let's do this. I think we do need to fix this up a little bit to get the same answers we had before, or it's just totally wrong. I don't know. Either one. Okay, so let's go ahead and hear console log. Now remember, dec is the whole object. Dec y is the value we want. And we need to divide it by a million because it is in microradians. And then to get from uh, radians to degrees, we need to divide it by uh, degree. Okay. For ra, we will do the same thing. Let's see. So we need to do ra.y mod math, well, 2 times math pi. And I'm going to go ahead and put this parentheses in here, though I'm not sure I really need it. Um, okay, so that gives us the right ascension in radians. And we might as well just get it out in degrees. So let's see what this does. It'll probably break. Okay. Um, not what I expected. But also, where are all these numbers coming from? Oh, because I think I do actually do some... Um, Hmm. And again, someone should really, really fix that. And again, <laughs> I do have to group it. And again, this is something that the function will eventually do because we, we're just, you know, sort of playing around right now. The function will know what to divide it by and hopefully what to mod it by. So let's go ahead and see what this does. You've got the right answer. Um, this 248 actually looks pretty good. I remember that being the value we wanted for the right ascension. The uh, declination we appear to be having issues with. And deck y, it's the interpretation. So their deck interp. Okay, so why are we having problems with this is correct, this is correct, this is. Um, I should be. Okay, that's kind of weird. So this should become like minus 3.8, well, there's something wrong here. Oh, this should become minus point, okay. This should become me actually printing something in front of the value so it has some meaning. Just in case you're wondering, oh, actually, hang on, this is actually, oh, right, right, because all this happens afterwards. So yeah, minus 22.03, 248.98, nice. We got the function working, at least in a trivial way. I'm going to go ahead and save it as a zip because I'm extremely paranoid. But I will be ignoring my zip file, so that, that's also kind of a nice thing to do. Um, okay, so now we have this. N now we said we're going to actually try to do this for the moon, see how accurate we can get, um, or actually see how accurate it is. So let's go ahead and... I'm just going to replace this, I think. It's just going to be really obnoxious here. Um, so this will be deck. And this will be ant. No, this will be RA, ant and deck is a joke that people in Britain might get. Then again, they might not, because they're pretty old. Uh, Ant and Deck are pretty old. They might be dead. I don't think they're dead. Um, okay, so we're going to use Lunar Deck Interp. Lunar RA Interp. And this is going to be less accurate. Uh, well, actually, it should be equally accurate. 
Um, <laughs> but you know, whatever. Wouldn't count on it. All right, so the declination is minus 16.1. The RA is 330.85, blah, blah, blah. And I guess because Stellarium, which we actually trust to give it to us, is going to give it to us in hours, we might as well put another divided by 15 in here. Okay, so minus 16.10, 22.05 hours, and th that should be quite wrong. So let's go ahead and find the moon. Woo! Here comes the moon. I'm going to rate, I'm going to get rid of the frickin' horizon because I'm getting bored by it. Alright, so we can at least, the moon is... Wait. 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 This is one of the problems of uh, Stellarium adding in new stuff. Hydra moon, which is I think the moon of something, uh, it takes precedence over moon. So I, of course, want this moon, the one, the one that's ours. Okay. So the uh, the the array of date is 220129, and I said it was uh, something else. No, I think it was that actually 220109. Let's go ahead and actually run that up in in. Uh, let's see, of date 220129. The crowd is hushed. 22.0247222, and I had 22.056. So it's not as accurate as I wanted it to be, um, but you know, whatever. And the uh, of geometric, <laughs> that's for refraction, by the way, but we're not going to deal with that. 16.39.23. And it's a negative, but we're not we're going to ignore that. And 16.65.6388. And I said... Whoa. That's way off. Hang on. When in doubt, pretend you didn't see the thing that went wrong. 16.39. That is... That is way off. That that's not acceptable. Sixteen point six five, and I said, "Yeah, that's that's four. That's three tenths of a degree off. That's that's too much of an error." Um, I'm going to cheat. I think the one thing I was worried about earlier is that uh, my position was off by one. So if that's the case, I'm going to add one here and see if we get better results. That is very hacky, of course. You shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing that. Um, and am I getting better results? Not noticeably. Yeah. So let me get rid of that hack because it, it is inaccurate. Um, actually, it made a very small difference. Um, okay. Okay, okay. So now I'm going to sort of pull out the, uh, the ace, the deuce in the card. I don't know what I'm talking about. I actually have all these values computed uh, from C-Spice, and I'm not happy with this. Hang on, I'm, s I'm so unhappy with this, I'm going to interrupt myself. Um, yeah, these numbers are, are too high, actually. I'm going to just cheat for my own benefit and look to see what uh, data I have for... Uh, I have the, you know, RA and declination uh, per minute for the moon. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and look for that. That's on another machine, unfortunately. Um, no, it's not. It's actually on this machine, too. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look now. Um, that's going to be in, and it might be too big to load. And it's in what I call the directory of the day. So over here, it is uh, BC Moon... No, I'm sorry, both of these are just uh, approximation files. The actual data is on another machine, so I will go ahead and check that. If it's accurate to what C-Spice says it is, I'm pretty happy with that, actually. Um, and I'm pretty sure in C-Spice I actually have it as, um, as degrees. In fact, I know I have it as degrees, because, you know. Sorry, as, as radians. Not micro-radians, but actual radians. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're not going to do any... Uh, we still have to do the modding. Um, but we are not going to convert to degrees, and we are not going to convert to hours. Now, if this is wrong, I have really effed something up. Uh, so, that's probably what happened, actually. 
Okay, so we're looking at this time. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, turns out I only have it per minute, and this is actually between two minutes, but I can, I can deal with that. I hope that didn't kill anything. I just suspended the stream for a tenth of a second because I had to. Um, okay, oh one... I'm doing this stuff on another machine so you can't see me. So big haha -ha on you. 7230, okay, got it. Alrighty, let me go ahead and go over to where I have the data stored, which is, I forget. No, it's in, actually I know where it is. Okay. So let me, let me bring this, okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and look at the one that comes like 30 seconds before, because it's not, shouldn't make that much of a difference. Um, and we're looking at the moon. Okay, that wasn't cool. And it is the year 2019. I have them separated out by year, although obviously we're not going to be, uh, we're not going to be uh, looking at them that way. Okay, so what the hell? 15753, 37200. Stand by. Okay. 15753. It turns out these numbers are not actually the 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 um the exact comp computation between ephemeris time, which is what Spice uses, and Unix time is not a fixed conversion because Unix time, at least the kind most people use, skips over leap seconds, and so you have this very strange sort of a uh, a, a, a change between Unix time and its fractional seconds is what, what you end up getting. Uh, so 15, 5, 7, 7, 5, 3, 3, 7, 2. Yeah, let's see how close we can get to that. I, we, we're not going to be able to hit it because it's only per minute. Um, 3, 7, 3, 10. That's 3, 10. 3, 7, 2, 50, which is 20 seconds later, which I think is good enough. Um, it says the right ascension is 5.774544. Um, boy, I should have probably run this first. Um, 5.7744. It's a little bit off, but I think that is an acceptable offness. The uh, declination is going to be minus 281118. 281118. And I'm just looking at this, and I think, um, wait, one, one, three, um, yeah, well, we're going to, we're going to cheat a little bit here, um, we can, well, I'm going to test it on a value that I know is good, because it's actually exactly equal to one of the values in the file here, um, the only problem being this thing is really bad about uh, letting me cut and paste. So I'm going to have to do sort of 15753. Let me actually put this up here. Let known. This is the time that I know I have values for that are exact. 15753. Ooh, shiny. 753. 36530. Oh. You'd think that would be it, but no. Uh, eight one six eight eight three. Yeah, because that is actually just freaking fucked, is what it is. Um, it's because that's the the translation from ephemeris time to Unix time is is weird. Or it's not weird, and I'm just making stuff up. Act it is a little weird. I don't. I didn't realize it was this gonna be this weird. So that's sort of the. All right. Oh. Yes, because I meant to say known. Okay. And this will actually tell us whether I've got an off by one error, a fence post error somewhere. Uh, if, unless it doesn't. So, 281627. What am I looking at? 36530. 
Okay, so 281626. Damn it, I'm going to have to minimize this. Um, 281626 is what it says here. This is 26. 281626, 281627, and that is an acceptable error because that's in a very high digit there. And uh, 5.772806, 4.772806. One oh six. That's fine because again we have micro radian error which we are allowed to have. So um, either Stellarium's wrong, which actually to be honest I think it is because it, they use slightly different algorithms, uh, and I think those algorithms are less accurate. And I'm saying that because I don't want to be wrong, but it actually also might be true. So since we'll go ahead and keep Stellarium running, it's a fun program to have running. Okay, so what should we do next? Well, what you do next is check to see how long I've been streaming. Uh, one hour and ten minutes. Let's give it a couple more minutes here. Um, so now the question is, can we find the sub-solar point from all of this? In other words, the point where the sun is directly overhead. Um, but first, I actually did one a long time ago, which is somewhat accurate. Um, and I'm going to use it as sort of a test for what... Um, sort of a test for what we're going to be doing. So according to this program, which is less accurate, but well, the sun is uh, overhead somewhere in Australia. Really? That seems strange. I thought Australia was too far south for that. But apparently it is. And then just because we don't want to be um, sun, where is the sun up? And I think even um, that's not what I meant. Oh, and I probably should have said map. Okay, and time and date does do this. And, whoa! Oh, me darned. Australia. I don't know if they'll let you zoom in on this map, so I don't know how accurate you can get this to be. I think you can actually go... Oh, here it is. Um, position of the moon... Uh, which I say, okay, so they say it's just over here. My, my program says it's actually pretty much in the same place. Um, blink! We can do blink tags, except we can't because they're different uh, they're different sizes. But uh, let's see, so roughly speaking, I'm in the same general ballpark. So now the question is how can we get, knowing the right ascension and declination, how do we know where something's overhead? The declination, it turns out, is just the latitude of where something's overhead. It's, it's just that easy, because the, the declination is exactly equal to the Earth's latitude, and uh, the Earth, even as the Earth rotates, the latitude and dec of declination basically don't change. Um, in other words, if something is overhead at you know midnight, it'll be overhead at same declination, not the same object, at noon. And the right ascension, however, does change, and in order to compute that, I really should have a, a GMST function here somewhere. And I'm pretty sure I don't. I'm going to check real quick. And here's how we check. Uh, we go into BC git. We look for all the files in .js. Now, I don't... I, there are... There is JavaScript in files called .html, but I'm hoping that I'm smart enough to put library stuff into this. And so then I'm going to do an xargs minus i gmst. So let's see if we can find. It's not going to be there. Um, yeah, and that was kind of a bad thing to do because um, apparently I was not really smart with that. I probably should have said grep minus il, meaning show me the files in which I will find gmst. Don't actually show me the grep results. Uh, so that was kind of stupid. Yeah, that just looked freaking weird. So let's do this again. Um, oh, it happens to occur in my one of my tile caches, but that's not a natural function. So how do we compute the Greenwich means, the, the blah, 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 what I just said? And the answer is I, there's more than one way to do it, of course, but it turns out that I do have a mathematical function that does it, and it comes from um, the Navy. So you know it's accurate. Unfortunately, it's also hideous because this converts, let's see, oh, it, Unix time D. That's not bad. Um, Greenwich mean, so 
This is the Greenwich Mean Sidereal Time, which means which line of right ascension is overhead at Greenwich, which is a suburb of England, which is where, uh, of London, where we declare the prime meridian to be. Um, I am not happy about this at all because I don't think I think JavaScript is going to choke on these really big numbers here. But you know what? Doesn't we can always change them later? Whoa, that was absolutely the opposite of what I wanted to do. I wanted to cut, copy, not, not paste. Okay, so let's over here. Um. And again, we're just going to do this in the very sort of, well, you know what, let's go ahead and write a little tiny function for this. Um, and I'm going to put a to-do, convert to object format. But for right now, getting lazy. So given D, we want to return that. And that is going to be the, oh, actually, Let's see what happens. Uh, it's not going to work. There's there several problems here. One is that this number is going to be um, much bigger than 2 pi, unless we're looking at a very... Um, and also, D is in days when we really want it in um, in seconds, because that's we're not being consistent here. However, let's see what the Greenwich Mean Time was at... Um, la, 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 la. Uh... So we're going to console log GMST, and we're going to convert known from seconds into days by doing this. And again, this is just... And we're even going to just sort of say GMST. By the way, I think this is the last... Th oh, GMST is not defined. Well... Um... Am I using the wrong syntax? I think that's how you declare a function. Um, oh, yeah, I can't actually do that, though. Okay, so the GMST is this thing. Again, it's, it's, it's not microradians, which is good, but it is... Um, we need to mod it out by 2 pi. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, I think I'm being overly cautious with the parentheses here. Let's see if that gives us a better number. That does not give us a better number. In fact, the number we're getting there is not... Oh, it is. I'm sorry. It's fine. It's this. And so that's the GMST in radians. Um, uh, the GMST in radians and the sun's RA in radians, RA rad, is this sucker. Um, so I think if we subtract this number, RA rad, from this number, convert to degrees, that'll give us the longitude of where the sun is overhead. And by that I mean, I'm going to say it's going to work just because uh, I've had so much stuff work today, I just kind of want it to not work, uh, which means I'll say it will work. So this is basically what the, uh, the sun's hour angle is with respect to Greenwich. So this is this is in radians. So this is this is not going to be this is going to be kind of weird looking here. Um, and I'm going to convert it to degrees. And I, guess I did a great job of also not bothering to um, to label it. But uh, 4.1. Okay. And that's in radians. So I'm going to divide it by math divided by degree to get something tells me this something's wrong here I suspect aside from the fact that I don't know how to use parentheses 236 degrees uh, 
which there's something wrong here. Um Yeah, there's something very slightly wrong here. And I can't quite put my finger on it. Um actually Stellarium should actually tell us though uh what the sun's hour angle is. It's actually pretty good about stuff like that, which is why I keep it around. Let's go back to the sun. Sun, it's a star. Um hour angle is fourteen hours at that time, almost exactly 14 hours, uh, which means it'll be at the uh, 14 times 15, which is 211 degrees. Oh, you know what? This might be actually correct. Um, and what am I forgetting to do here, though, is... <sighs> maybe I've got a sign messed up somewhere, I think, maybe, or... No, that would just make this minus 230. I think I might need to subtract this. I mean, I might need to subtract 180 degrees off of this. Uh, but unfortunately, I don't know why I need to do that, so it's kind of bugging me. Um, and I'll do it. And I'll probably get the right answer out of it. Uh, 56 degrees east. And I don't think that's where, where it is, though. Um, yeah, cause this is 50, this is way beyond 56 degrees east. So let's see where this, this actually is. There's, there's something very small that's wrong here. Longitude difference. What is the current longitude? Uh, here it is. 139 degrees. Um, and this is like a slightly different time, but it's pretty close. 139 degrees. And I'm saying, I'm going to actually get rid of this stupid thing, 139 degrees, and I'm saying 236. So, clearly something is very wrong. Um, it's possible that uh, JavaScript doesn't like these huge numbers and it's just kind of overflowing or something. So one thing we can do is, um, uh, this is the GMST, we can convert this to hours, so this is, uh, this is radians, divide by degree, that's now degrees, divide by 15 to get hours, and we might say what's the use of that is because we can actually test it. So according to this, the Greenwich mean sidereal time is about 6 hours and 25, sorry, 6.25 hours. And over here, uh, we're actually going to make a new tab for this. Greenwich mean sidereal time. There's a little, per there's a, uh, somewhere they actually computed for us. And I th nope, it's not here. Um, there's a little calculator somewhere that does all this uh, stuff for you. Um, here it is, I think. Alright, so this should be current now. Time zone difference. Come on, what's the GMST? Greenwich means sidereal time at longitude zero, which is Greenwich, um, is 9.728 hours, or 146 degrees. And I don't think we're getting anywhere near that number. Yeah. And again, I think it's because we're actually, um, we're using numbers that are insanely too large for, for JavaScript to handle. And there are, there are ways to fix this. We can actually uh, take this, um, take this equation here and simplify it to m much simpler numbers that JavaScript can deal with. Um, ooh, and also maybe I should have actually been doing, before I did the, you know what, I think I need put parentheses around there before I do the mod uh, 2 pi. Doesn't help, but you know. And I sense there's something else wrong here. I think this, especially when I multiply it by D, which is a huge number right now, it's a number of days since uh, 1970, um, I think this is just getting that messed up. And also I think here I need to say math pi. 
Although I think I also defined pi as a constant, so that didn't change anything. Um, so yeah, we're okay. Um, I I thank the person who has stayed in chat. If you have any questions, have any comments, make them in the next few seconds because I'm about to end the stream. Uh, if you don't, then I uh, hopefully this was helpful to someone somewhere, and the stream will be ending. Okay, uh, next time I think we're going to pick it up from here. Pretty sure we can fix this. This is not a huge deal. The formula is from the Navy, and it's, it's reliable. And I can even go to that page and show you with the formula. The only thing I tried to do is I tried to make it um, integral, so it'd be like... Mathematica has a weird problem where if you use approximate numbers, it assumes they're very approximate, more so than you necessarily want them to be. Um, so if you tell it that like one inch is 2.54 centimeters, that's exact because that's how the inch is now defined. But it'll assume 2.54 centimeters to three significant digits, two, five, and four, and that any and it'll lose precision beyond that if you do ca computations. It's going to be a little bit careful with that. And one workaround to that is to make all your numbers exact, even if they're not really exact, because then you can then you can still you won't lose any precision unless you choose to lose precision uh, by telling Mathematica to take numerical approximations. Okay, that's the stream for today. Thank you. Uh, stream for now. I probably won't stream again today. Um, have a good one.